Stephanie has 1,000 eggs to pack into a carton of 12 eggs. While packing the eggs, she breaks N eggs. The unbroken eggs completely fill my collection of cartons with no eggs left over. If N is less than 12, what is the value of N? 1,000, we have to divide that into 12. So we get 83 with a remainder of 4. So that means that you can put in the, all those 1,000 uh, uh, eggs into 83 cartons, each carton holding 12 eggs, but you will have a remainder of four, but that remainder of four is basically representing the amount of eggs that were broken, and since they want n less than 12, n is four, because we could have other values of n, like 16 and so on, like you just keep adding 12, but they want a value less than 12. In the diagram, ABCD is a square with the side length 4, points PQRS are the midpoints of the sides of the square as shown. What is the area of the shaded region? Area of the shaded region, well, the full square would be 4 times 4, and then subtract from that two of those triangles, and each triangle is represented by 1 half base times height. The base would be 2, and the height would be 2. So there's the math. So this is 16 minus 4, and that is 12. In the diagram, line segments A, B, C, D, and E, F are parallel. Endpoints A and E lie on C, G, and C, H, uh, respectively. If angle G, A, B is 100, angle C, E, F is 30, and angle A, C, E is X, what is the value of X? Okay, do some angle chasing. That's always fun, right? Angle chasing. Okay, so here we go. Uh, these are parallel lines. That's what these symbols represent. So that means this angle is going to be the same as that angle. So that's 100. And then this is also parallel, so that means that, what does it mean? Well, first got to figure out this angle. Uh, so that's going to be 180 minus 30, so that's 150. And that angle is the same as this angle, so that's 150. So now if we look at this whole circle here, that whole circle has got to add up to 360, right? So those angles are x, 100, and 150. And that all adds up to 360, and therefore x, when you do that math, is 110. If 12x is equal to 4y plus 2, determine the value of the expression 6y minus 18x plus 7. All right, so at first glance, it seems a bit weird. Uh, not do I do use inspection here, or what do I do? But I, I looks kind of similar. Let me let me rearrange it first. So 4y minus 12x is equal to minus 2. This now looks somewhat similar to that. And I think if I multiply both sides by 1.5, I will get exactly that. So if I multiply both sides by 1.5, this left side would become minus 3, and that would become 6y minus 18x. So there you go. So therefore, in this expression, 6y minus 18x plus 7, well, the 6y minus 18x is minus 3. And then plus 7. So minus 3 plus 7, I believe, is 4. Determine the largest positive integer n with n less than 500, for which 6048 times 28 to the power of n is a perfect cube. That is, it is equal to m to the power of 3 for some positive integer n. The first thing I want to do is take this 6. 4, 8, 28 to the power of n and break it up into its prime factors. So you guys know how to do that. Uh, 6, 0, 4, 8, which is going to be 2 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 3 times 7 to the power of 1. And this 28 is 2 to the power of 2 times 7 to the power of 1. And that's all to the power of n, right? Let's just make sure I did that correctly. 2 to the power of 5, 3 to the power of 3, 7 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 7 to the power of 1, yes. Okay, and now we got to make that into some perfect cube. So let's combine this now. So that doesn't change, but this, two, this would become 2 to the power of 2n using exponent laws and 7 to the power of n. Let's combine it again. That's going to be 5 plus 2n using exponent laws. The 3 stays the same, and the 7 becomes 1 plus n, I believe so. Okay, so now we got to compare. We want it to be a perfect cube. Well, this is already a perfect cube. So this one 
we're done. We don't need to worry about that. Now we have to be concerned with this guy and this guy. We want those to be multiples of three. That's the only way it's going to be a perfect cube. So 5 plus 2n and 1 plus n. Both of those have to be multiples of 3. And we want the largest possi possible integer with n less than 5. So what I'm going to do is start counting backwards from 500. So 499, 498, like that. And see if, hopefully I don't have to count too much. Oh, what am I doing here? I put it in the wrong place. I got to put it over here. 498, 497, 496, and then so on down for n. Okay, so let's remove those these numbers here. Okay, so let's let's see what we get. And remember, we want both of them to be uh, multiples of three, and that's the only way it could be a perfect cube. So when n is 499, this is 1003, and this is 500, and uh, I believe those are not both multi multiples of 3. When it's 498, this is 1001, and this is 499. Again, not both multiples of 3. Then when it's 497, this is 999, this is 498, and there you go. Both of those are multiples of 3, and they happen when n is equal to 497, which is the answer. A total of 2015 tickets numbered 1 through 2015 are placed in an empty bag. Alfie removes ticket A from the bag. Bernice then removes ticket B from the bag. And finally, Charlie removes ticket C from the bag. They notice that A is less than B, less than C, and A plus B plus C is 2018. How many ways could this happen? Hmm. Okay, so let's just go with what they tell us. They told me that A plus B plus C is 2018. And A is less than B and less than C, and that's pretty much all they gave me. That not isn't much information, but I guess that's all we have to work with. Uh, okay, so le let's let's see what happens. Uh, I'm there's I think there's a short way and a long way, but I think if we see a pattern, it can become quicker. So that's the hope. So let's just see A, B, and C. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. They are the smallest I can make it is 1, and that's 2. So this would be 2015 because A plus B plus C has to equal 2018. Okay, let's keep going. That would be 2014. And if you keep going like that, eventually you're going to get to 1008 and 1009. And the reason is because you have to maintain that inequality. Okay, I think I've exhausted the ones. And for this, I get 100, 1007 uh, cases. So... Now I'm trying to see if there's a pattern here. Now let's go to A equals 2. Uh, this will be 3. This will be 2013. This will be 2. This will be 4. 2012. And you guys get the point. So if I go all the way to the end, I'll get 1007 and 1009, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. And then for these guys, this is 1005. Okay. Let's keep going here. I think I'm going to need to keep going... Uh, until I see a pattern, I don't obviously see a pattern right now. So the threes for 2001, I'm doing the exact same thing. And then I'll, ex I'll extrapolate a little bit quicker this time. 1008. And these guys add up to 1004. Ah, that is unfortunate because I thought it was going to go down by twos every time. You know, 1007, 1005, 1003. 1004 it makes me think, oh boy, I don't know what the pattern is then. Well, let's just keep going. Four. 5, 2009, dot, 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 all the way to 4, 1006, and 1008. This one was 1002. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. Well, let me, let me just keep going here. I think I should, I hope I can see a pattern sooner or later. Um, 2007, dot, dot, dot. 5, 1006, 1007, and that one is 1001. Okay. I, th 2, 1, 2, 1. Okay, I think I know what the pattern is. Let me just do one more. 7, 2005, dot, 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 6, 1005, 1007, and this 
is 999. Nine. Okay, I think I know what the pattern is. Two, it's going down by two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay, I got it. Okay, so we basically have to add up these guys. Okay, well, how do you add those up? Well, one thing I noticed is that we can look at what's missing. See, what's missing here is there's no 1,006. Here, there's no 1,003. Here, there's no 1,000. So you notice we're missing numbers that are in a very identifiable pattern. So we are missing uh, 1,006, 1,003, 1,000, and pretty much probably every uh, minus 3 from that. So 997, blah, blah, blah all the way down to, you can kind of extrapolate this, 13, 10, 7, 4, and then all the way down to 1. So this is what we're missing. Now what we need to add is everything from uh, 1 all the way up until 2000 and, uh, 1007. <laughs> 1007. So that's what we need to add. But then, of course, we have to subtract the ones that are missing. And I'm pretty sure that will do it. At least I hope. Okay, so the first one, that one's easy. You guys know that formula, consecutive integers. That one is pretty straightforward. But these red guys, uh, let me think about the red guys for a second. How do I add that up? Well, first of all, how many numbers are there? Uh, there's 336 numbers. 336 numbers. And then, therefore, we want to add pairs, 168 pairs, because the pairs, if you pair it up, like 1,006 plus 1 is 1,007. 1,003 plus 4 is 1,007. 1,000 plus 7 is 1,007. So every pair adds up to 1. Oops, I got to subtract it. Not, Yeah, I got to subtract it. Every pair adds up to 1,007, and we have 168 pairs. And there you go. And when you crunch out these numbers, you get 5075281619176 minus one six nine one seven six and that results in three three eight three five two and there you go that is the correct answer